Aisha, what about you? I wouldn't necessarily echo those views. I think um, on a personal level, I haven't experienced any hostility per se. Um, I think there might be some apprehension which is normal and natural. In fact, some family members who have been in central London and Kingston recently, they felt uh, that people were actually trying to be nicer to them. So I think as a community, we do need to remember that we have human values that everyone celebrates. And I think when traumas like this emerge, we get so embroiled in the finger pointing wars that we forget to ask why are we here. And I think we need to keep that larger perspective in mind. And that vital question is um, that Islamic extremism didn't rise in isolation. It has been a large part of product of our government's policies and the way we have engaged in the Middle East. And moving forward, I think we need to rethink that engagement. And ISIS, which has been blamed for these attacks, um, everyone now knows it's largely documented that it's been a product of the Iraq war. So when th that argument is put forward, some people will say, well, that's making excuses for the actions of a group like ISIS. Um, I don't think it's making excuses. I think it's trying to delineate the situation because we know that it's been, it's like giving two children or two toddlers guns. Uh, ISIS or extre extremists do something. And a day after the Paris attacks, we heard that France was uh, launching airstrikes in Syria. Mm. And that, that might be a popular response, but that may not be the most prudent because that's like giving two children guns. And we're not, we're not blaming anyone. We're not trying to get embroiled in those wars. Well, what would you say the response should be to ISIS? I think a vital issue is how do we move forward? How do we, how do we nip the evil in the bud? How do we deal with this? And I think a key issue is uh, getting to the bottom of how these groups are actually funded. I think that is a vital concern, and I don't see that much in the media at all. Is that not the sort of thing that governments are doing though and also trying to work alongside communities to to stop people actually being recruited as well I don't think they're doing enough to sort of cut the supply lines to terrorist organizations mm -hmm. I think we uh, uh, as in Britain we make a lot of money out of the oil rich Middle East and I think we need to rethink our trading partners maybe and we need to get to the bottom of how these terrorist groups are funded I mean, I sit in my personal capacity as a member of a minority group. We call ourselves MD Muslims. And we've been here in the UK for a long time. Um, and uh, similar to ISIS, which I think it's interesting, ISIS claims to have a caliphate, and we also have a caliph who's the head of the community. But he's been spreading the message of love and peace and loyalty. Uh, he's been touring the world. And he uh, sits here in England and he gives a Friday sermon every Friday and he talks of these cr uh, crucial notions of integrating into societies peacefully. Does that and need to be heard more widely though? Uh, I think so and I think the media can play a vital role, can play a bigger part in helping us being heard. I mean today in our largest mosque in Morden, we, which is called the Battle for Two Mosques, there's going to be a special service uh, this afternoon being held for Paris. Um, it's called United We Stand. It's going to be from 2 to 3 p.m. just following Friday prayers. And members of all faith communities have been invited to attend. And similarly, from the 23rd of November, we're tr uh, planning to launch a bus campaign on London buses. It's going to play an advert uh, for two weeks called United Against Extremism. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in Amina Blake.